Welcome. Ah, uh, I am here today because I want to record a response to season, sorry, the chosen season three, episode two, at the very end, where there's a scene where Jesus is with little James and James is, little James is coming to him because of his illness, sickness, whatever his, his problem is in his body. <clears throat> and he has a discussion about how Jesus hasn't healed him yet. And so there's a lot of really, really good things that they have the actor who purchased Jesus say. But there's some things that are just a little bit off that are really, really, really important. Because it's not the full picture. So I'm going to just do a brief summary of what was said and then I'm just going to talk about it and I hope that this is going to help to keep inspiring those of you who are seeking God to uh, be healed or you're walking out a healing journey with God and I don't want you to be discouraged by what you might have heard in that show because I know as some people are learning to believe that it is God's will always to heal Things like this can really impact us. So, little James asks him, and this is in, well, at least on the YouTube version of the live stream, an hour and seven minutes, and he says, why haven't you healed me? Jesus answered, because I trust you. He says, you know, we, you know that in the Father's will, I could heal you right now. But there are dozens who can tell that story. He says, think of your story if I don't that you still praise God in spite of this. Now I'm going to stop and say that, yeah, I can praise God in spite of the fact that I did not receive a miracle in, for healing. But that's one way that God heals, and it's as the Spirit wills, which is from 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians <laughs> uh, chapter 12, which has the gifts of the Spirit, and that they're, distributed as he wills, and there are gifts of healing. That is a manifestation of the Spirit that is not tied to somebody's faith. Okay? So, absolutely, I can praise God in spite of the fact that I was not somebody who received a miracle. I'm somebody who healed be, by the transform, being transformed by the renewing of my mind, that I can initiate my own healing by believing. That it is in the atonement, that Jesus provided is a part of the redemptive plan and work of God on the cross. And I have so much biblical evidence I can go to, but this is only one way that God heals his miracles. And so it is correct to say that I can still praise God in spite of the fact that I did not receive an instantaneous miracle. And now I know I'm in many ways thankful because of the transformation that has happened in my heart and in my life. And the character that's developed, me getting out of the way. I haven't gone back to being selfish, prideful, um, insecure, um, selfish, <laughs> self-centered, self-had-to-die, self-righteous. Did I say that again? Enough, selfish. <laughs> self, 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 you know, conform to the patterns of this world. So <clears throat> I am thankful and I've learned that I have had to be content with the word and the spirit, and that's enough for me. If something God says, something outside of that, wonderful, but I'm not going to seek it. Because as soon as you start to seek it, and it becomes a way that you believe you're going to be healed, you one, you've severely limited God, and now you've turned this into being something about that you have to do and find and get. And um, unfortunately, that can just make many people sicker, especially when they're dealing with a chronic illness, which is almost, an, I would almost say always, um, there's a stress response involved, a chronic fight or flight. So it's not really going to help when we get desperate and we, and then we start all the stuff, not trusting God. What did I do wrong? I'm not worthy. Get angry at God. All kinds of things starts to start to happen. If that's the way that we believe is the only way that God is going to heal us. So I learned protect my heart, guard my heart, be content with the word and the spirit. Okay. So then Jesus goes on to say, that you still praise God in spite of this, that you know how to focus on what matters more than the body. I agree <clears throat> that many people idolize their healing. And I had to learn that 
going after healing wasn't the way. It was learning who he is and who I am and having an intimate relationship with Jesus that actually transformed my body outwardly from the inside first. As a man thinks in his heart, therefore he is. So I, I absolutely believe that they're right in saying that there is a power and an, an amazing, I mean, it is an amazing testimony to focus more on what, what matters more than the body. And so he says to show people you can be patient with suffering here on earth because you know you will spend eternity with no suffering. I agree that there is suffering here on earth that's but not God ordained suffering <clears throat> that comes from, well, the devil being oppressed by the devil, which Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. That's done. Um, and, and then also from persecution, which we suffer when we stand up for our faith. Most of us in North America do not know actual persecution. Okay, so, <clears throat> but to have that faith to know that, oh my gosh, one day there's an eternity beyond anything I could uh, imagine or just, it's going to be glorious beyond anything. Get me out of this body and it's going to be glorious. Yeah, that's wonderful to continue to be strong in that faith <clears throat> and to be patient and learn to be patient. We know that's a fruit of the spirit. Those are wonderful, wonderful attributes to grow in. But the suffering is not ordained by God. And oftentimes, much of our suffering is of our own doing. And people might not like me hearing that, saying that. But I know in my own journey that it's when I've gotten into my flesh and focused on myself and on striving and on pushing or whatever the various ways or when I'm learning to trust God and take a step of faith that my flesh is like, hold on a second. Are we really letting go of control of that? Are we really giving that over? Can we really trust him? Is he really who he says he is? And the flesh absolutely goes through his temporary struggle and suffers. And the Bible says this in 1 Peter 5.10. I don't have the verse uh, memorized, but basically that, oh, there's an eternal glory. I'm just going to turn there because I think it's really important. Um, <clears throat> but may the God of all grace, he... All provision, all grace, all power, all strength, all favor. Woo! There is a manifold grace as well. There's not just one type of grace. He is the spirit of grace. It is Jesus Christ. So, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So, this is where, sure, we can have flesh come up and go, ah, to the degree that we're willing to just be like, okay, that's a part of the process. I'm going to keep trusting my God. I know who he is. We get settled, perfected, established, and strengthened. I agree with that kind of flesh suffering. Absolutely. And I agree with persecution, but I do not agree with God withholding his healing power. And <clears throat> there's so many reasons why. I might as well go there right now. First of all, Jehovah Rapha lives on the inside of us. It is his nature and his character to heal because we have been given the Holy Spirit, sealed with the Holy Spirit, joined with our spirit. We have been born again, made new, alive to God. We have been given our inheritance. It is in our spirit. The degree that we allow and surrender to that is the degree to which through our souls pours the character and nature of God, which is healing healing. It's not God chooses where or when or how there is. He is the healer on the inside of us. So point number one, point number two, <clears throat> by your stripes, we were healed. Sozoed. This is multiple verses in the Bible. Matthew eight seventeen even talks about it. I'm not going to go to that right now, but you were healed. The Bible says, <clears throat> that word sozo, which sometimes gets translated saved, is the same word for healing. It is in the atonement. We can look to the Old Testament, to types and shadows of Jesus Christ. When the Israelites left after the Passover out of Egypt, which was a type and shadow of Jesus, the Bible says, I don't have the verses on, maybe you can go look it up, that none of them were feeble or weak. Every single one of the Israelites was strong and healthy. After that Passover, 
Wow, another type and shadow of Jesus. Then we have Moses raising the serpent on the pole. And the, that is, again, a type and shadow of Jesus on the cross. And anybody who looked to him would be healed. Type and shadow of Jesus. Anybody. We have, I mean, I can go on and on and on. We can look at James, where the, the Lord tells us in James 5. I don't have those verses memorized. So we're going to James. And I am fired up, clearly, because... This is just not biblical, and it's unfortunate that this is something that has been passed around the church from church to church because trying to explain why people haven't gotten healed. There are different ways to heal. This is another way that people get healed. Right here. I get it. Uh, <laughs> Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will sozo or save or heal the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. Then it actually says in verse 16, to pray for one another that you may be healed. So we can pray for one another. We can go to the elders, pray the prayer of faith. And so why would God command us or give us this direction and then say, oh, but sometimes there's some cases where people are going to do that, but they're actually, they're not going to receive. I'm going to choose. I mean, that's just continually going against what the Bible says. So those are a few ways to be healed, but we can initiate our own healing, like I said. And that's the part where I work with people to help you through your relationship with God to walk out that healing that is through the transformation, being transformed by the renewing of the mind. Learning to actually receive, get out of the way. We have to surrender over to who lives on the inside of us. The Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. And Grace, which is provision, favor, um, supply for your every need, strength, and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of the intimate knowing of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible also says in John 17, 3, that verse, I think, is 2 Peter 1, 2. Um, yeah, 2 Peter 1, 2. Um, John 17, 3 says to know him, intimately know the way that Adam knew Eve is eternal life. We can have a quality of life, an eternal, everlasting God life, the abundant life, the Zoe life that God talks about in the Bible. We can have that here on earth as it is in heaven, like Jesus told us to pray. And it's through us actually agreeing, not just analytically, not in our heads, but getting it into our hearts and receiving the truth of who we are and getting the junk out of the way. You know that Jesus only rebuked the self-righteous. You do not have to be perfect to heal. You just have to choose to surrender over self and everything you believe about yourself and agree with what God says about you. And to believe that and truly believe it in your heart, it takes intimacy with him because you got to know who he is, how much he loves you, how he sees you. There's a, uh, and um, eventually you can grow and understand and have that attitude of faith where you can start to say, hey, sickness, you don't get to stay in my body. I got Jehovah Rapha on the inside of me. So... I could actually probably make many more videos about this. But I just want to end and say this, that again, I agree to a certain degree. I agree that I have learned to walk so closely with God because I've had many, many trials. He did not ordain them. Most of it is because I'm thick headed. Because the Bible actually says in 2 Timothy 11, um, 2, no, 2 Timothy, I don't know exactly where is it, 2, Verses 11 to 12, that it's the, all scripture is God breathed and is used for the, basically the instruction of righteousness to correct, to reproof, to like, it's the word of God that is there to teach and correct us, not trials. We will learn through them, but we don't need to have them in order to grow in God. There's so many more things I want to say. But I think I'll stop there. Oh, so they're, they're quoting, they say in this passage, not passage, but in this scene, you know, that true strength is comes because of your weakness. 
And again, I go back to, yes, but it doesn't mean weakness doesn't mean sickness. Every single one of us is weak in ourselves. If you're not, you're boasting in yourself. You make Christ of no effect. Every single one of us is like, you know, you want to try and jump across the can can Grand Canyon to get yourself healed or you know, whatever it is, to get yourself saved. You are going to make it about four feet. Maybe you'll make it a foot more than me. Maybe I'll make it a foot more than somebody else. You're never going to make it to the other side. So we have to stop looking at ourselves, which is where self-righteousness and security, fear starts to get in. We start to look at ourselves. This is just the way the world has taught us, the way the enemy gets us to do, get our eyes off of Jesus. And when we get our eyes on him, we realize, and his love and his grace, he sort of goes, oh my gosh, like how far, fall, far short I fall. And then true strength can come but through our human frailty, but not meaning that we have to be sick in order to actually access that true strength. Uh, okay. I think I'll leave it at that. Woo! Except that, <clears throat> Kenneth Hagin, I might link to a video of his, because he's, he's phenomenal. He's seen so many people heal. He talks about the anointing coming on him. He's like, it's not my faith. It's not their faith. You know, it's the anointing. Um, but there's other times where, you know, it is somebody's faith or it's the prayer of faith. And there's like seven different ways he talks about that people get healed that are biblical. And he, he mentioned that <clears throat> of the 19 gospel accounts where Jesus healed somebody, 12 of them, it was their own faith. Seven of them, it was not. So again, I'm just trying to paint this picture that Believing God does always, there's, you can always initiate your own healing. You can always believe God for healing, but there are other options as well. But what, what bothers me about this scene is that it's just talking about this one way of a miracle where it's in God's control to, to release that supernatural manifestation of the spirit as if there's no other way to be healed. And so that's where I have this frustration with this because um, it's not a full picture. So I pray that that blesses somebody today and gets you to stay encouraged that you're on the right path if you are choosing to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And if you're using a program that helps with that, that's structured, that's awesome to help when you don't have clarity, when you can't see properly, when you need the bless someone to help you identify the blind spots. And if it's through your relationship with God, even better. <laughs> so that you're not just trying to apply principles because that is one ditch that people do get into. It's not it's no longer God, it's actually applying faith principles. And I've seen a lot of people get into a ditch with that, where it's no longer a faith in him and his grace. It's just my own faith that's going to heal me. Okay, I've said a lot. So God bless you all, and thank you for watching.